What's going on everybody? It's Saul Sunforge for Perfect Storm Entertainment. Today, we are playing Quest for Glory 3. As promised, uh, we just got finished with two hours of uh, Red Dead Redemption uh, 2 for you guys. Uh, we live streamed that exclusively to YouTube. And uh, so far, these uh, nostalgia plays are exclusive to YouTube as well. So, if you're looking for the most amount of content, uh, with the most amount of editing, uh, the most amount of time put into it, then YouTube is the place to be. But if you're looking for my live streams of my video games, uh, then go ahead and head on over to Mixer.com slash Saul Sunforge. Uh, link will be in the description, uh, as well as my Twitter. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get a few hours of play in here. This game is a little bit shorter. Well, it's a lot shorter, I'd say. The most of the other Quest for Glories. Uh, it's probably the shortest one. Uh, I don't remember specifically. I mean, it's been a long time since I played it. I don't. I remember, you know, some of the quests and stuff. But uh, we're gonna see if we can be a paladin in this one. I've never been a paladin in this one. Uh, I was usually whenever I was a paladin, it'd be like on Quest for Glory Four. Uh, all right. So let's get to it. There it is, baby. Your character is successfully imported. Boom! And we can be a paladin. Double fucking boom. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go now. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. Okay, you got 50 points. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll even off all of our stats if we can. So we got 24 points left. There we are. I thank you, Rakesh and my prince, for answering my summons. I have information for both of you. This is the last one without talking. The last quest for glory. As you know, three months ago in Razir, the evil Adavis attempted to unleash the genie of Lee in order to rule the world. Pre previously on Quest for Glory, Adam Lee stood before his hexagram, preparing to unleash the foul of Lee's to do his bidding. Hear me, O dark powers, light the darkness and bind at least to me forever. Here I come, knocked the damn candle over. He entered the room and broke the seal. By moving the candle. You idiot! You have destroyed my spell! Now you should be destroyed! Fool, you cannot hurt me now! I shall send thee to thy death! Huh, that's not how we kill him, but yeah, I guess that's one way. Misty! You passed through the raging flames and sent Adavis falling to his doom. When Adavis died, his magical power was released, and I could sense the moment of his death. Such a release of power could be felt by skilled magic users all over the world. Still, there is some mystery concerning the death of Adavis. Looks like Mario. It is very disturbing that the body of Adavis could not be found. Even with all my magic, I cannot determine who or what removed the body or what became of it afterwards. I believe the unbinding of Adavis's power could well have other darker results. 
Now we are again in my house in Shapir, hero. You have become the prince of Shapir by order of the Sultan Harun al-Rashid. Rakesh now desires to return to his home in Tarna. Last night I received this message from the sorceress Krisha in Tarna. Please tell Rakesh that he must return quickly to Tarna. There is serious talk of war here, and I think only Rakesh can now bring peace. I believe there is more to this war than just the anger of two tribes. I believe that a demon has again broken through to this land and seeks to destroy us all. In three days, a magical portal will open in Shapir to take Rakesh back to Tarna. I suggest that if you, Prince of Shapir, wish to truly be a hero, you accompany Rakesh. I mean, I really haven't I done enough to be a hero yet. I, if I truly be... Like, it, it just keeps going. If you truly want to consider yourself a hero, you'll take on a car. Well, now that you took on a car, if you really want to be a hero, you got to move up to an SUV. An SUV was nothing. If you really want to be a hero, you got to get hit repeatedly in the face with a bus. Palace of the Sultan over Shapir. Three days later. It greatly grieves me to say farewell to such fine friends and honored guests. Rakesh, you were a great aid to me, and I saw her to see you return to Tarna. Oh, great Sultan, it has been an honor to serve you. If you're a warrior of the Simbani, you have been a most excellent guildmaster for the Adventurers Guild and a gifted instructor of combat. Thank you for your services to Shapir. I be Shapir, we, I can't do it, I can't do it. I'm just going to do her. <clears throat> I leave Shapir with a great treasure. My son Simba, I'll never forget this place. Um, you, you interrupted my talking. My son, it breaks my heart to see you leave. You will always have a home here in Shapir. Just don't wear those damn purple pants anymore. They're so freaking ugly. I send with you a special gift. I give you a magical shield which will help protect you from magical attacks. May you never need to use it. Well, how am I going to defend myself? Let me kiss you passionately on the lips. Sultan, the magical porter of Tarna appears. Farewell, all of you. May you find the peace you seek. Okay. That might be it for now. I don't want to make the girlfriend question, question me. Why are you talking like that? Is that your true voice? It is good to see you again, Krisha. It is good to be with you again, Rakesh. Krisha, you have met Uhura of the Simbani village before? This is her son, Simba. Um, uh, hey, uh, Bari warrior. It's good to see you again, Uhura. That son of yours looks like a strong and healthy young cub. Missouri, Krisha, thank you for helping me to return. Simba and I need to be getting back to my people. Kwaharini. Qua, hurry, warrior, Uhura. Farewell. I have given him my sword, Krisha. He has the makings of a true paladin. A paladin? Is it a very great honor indeed for you to come here? Your skills may be the most useful in preventing war here. I can sense that you are also skilled in magic. Know, however, that the usage of magic is forbidden upon the streets of Tarna. In order to protect those without magic. Forget them scumbags. I'm the king shit. I've done a lot already. Now give me a piggyback ride. Do not trouble yourself with such actions. Okay. I guess I won't trouble myself with them.
Uh, welcome to our land, Princess Shapir. Tarna is an ancient city, and you will find much to do here. We line tars are a proud race, sometimes too proud for our own good. Most lion tars live in the eastern section of the city, away from humans. I have chosen to live in the western section with the humans. They are as much part of Tarna as our people. I am a worker of spells. Worker of spells, specializing in teleportation and communication. The magical portal which brought you here is an example of my magic. Magical portal allows people to travel across distances. It is a difficult spell to create, for it takes an incredible amount of magic and can only be done through ritual. Let's see, let's ask him about war. I will spend the next couple of days finding out more information about this war. We can speak more about this later. This is either a chest full of magical paraphernalia or one of those trick chests that magicians sometimes use when they need to beat a hasty retreat. These boxes hold dry spell components like dehydrated tsetse fly wings, crocodile scales, and impala antlers. Talk about your experiences in Shapir and how you defeated Adavis. The Enchantress Aziza spoke to me of Adavis. You must indeed be a hero to defeat such a wicked wizard. The Greek Kresha, you will always be welcome in our house, young hero. Is he really still that young, though? I mean, I guess he is. I really don't know how much time has passed specifically in these games. Say goodbye. Farewell, Princess Shapir. We will see you later, my friend. Your friend Rikish is a powerful looking lion tar, but he walks with a limp because of his injured leg. He took an arrow to the knee. The leader of the Sambani came to Tarna to ask us to ally with the Sambani against the Leopardmen. The Council of Judgment decided to investigate this talk of war. It is most unusual for the Council of Judgment to become involved with the affairs of humans. The Council of Judgment decided to send a peace mission into the jungle to speak with the Leopardmen. It was ambushed at night and only one human survived to speak of it. Rakesh Rishaka was the leader of the peace mission. They're all, are they all named Rakesh? Jeez. They really love ours. Do not know, my magic tells you nothing. I do not think so, but that may only be the wishes of a mother's heart rather than true knowledge. Oh, it's her mother? Forgive our rudeness, my friend, but Re Shaka is our daughter. Kresha, let us speak more of this later. Okay, I'll, I'll catch you guys later. Here, let's, let's increase the speed a bit. Gonna do it. some more look at that the volume control actually works in this game is that silly I reserved a room in your name at the nearby inn I can see you are eager to explore our city farewell princess Shapir how did you how did you reserve a room you had just found I was coming like as soon as you open the portal, pretty much. In the meantime, explore and enjoy Tarna. If you have any questions, you will find us here. Enter freely. You'll be welcome anytime. 
Well, almost any time. After all, Kish and I need some time to uh, speak with one another again after such a long parting. Good day. Oh, speaking, huh? Oh, sexy lions. Alright then. Uh, I think I remember some stuff here. Let's see here. Magic. Okay, that's the, that's their place. This is the apothecary. Yep. And this is the inn right here. Okay. Let's go down. We gotta go find that, uh, what, the money changer, I think. Holy shit. Oh, these guys are like Sanford and Son. They're, they're awesome. If you know what that even is, you might be too young, a lot of you. Sorry. Just look around. Have you ever seen such quality used items gathered anywhere? Everyone is a guaranteed anachronism. Pop, you don't even mean, you mean antique. I know what I mean. You keep out of this. As I was saying, they're all real antiques that you won't be able to buy anywhere else, so get them here. If you're looking for the bazaar, you come to the right place. If you have money, then you are talking to the right man. I know I got something you need somewhere. There are some folks around here who say that Tarna going to war is going to put us all out of business. Not me. Like to buy a World War One gas mask? Not many left in stock. <laughs> My associate and myself are quality dealers and use items of unbelievable value. We sell junk. I'm called Ann Forda, and this dummy here is my son. Okay. Basically, you talk to the son, and the dad answers no matter what. You greet the junk dealers. Hello. What can we sell you today? You say goodbye. Don't bother to come back unless you want to buy something. Pop, that's being rude. Stranger, come back and chat anytime. As long as you have money to spend, come and chat. <laughs> I didn't say they were new, dummy. I said they were mostly new. In the world of sales, you got to learn to accentuate the positive. In other words, lie. I didn't say that. You want to blow the sale? Just you listen and keep your mouth shut. As I was saying, we have the finest selection of mostly new items in the land of Tarna. What can I sell you? You, you there, are you going to buy something? Am I going to have to charge you for sightseeing? No, I'm trying to leave, man. I'll be back. You enter the north end of the bazaar and witness a dispute. What are you doing? Th that is not right. Stop him, thief! Alright, so I'm gonna turn down the. Ah, oh, the speed's locked. Fruit, fruit. I don't have time for that. Please accompany us to the Hall of Judgment. You were led by the guard to the Hall of Judgment to attend the judgment of the thief. The Council of Judgment has determined that you, Harami, have broken the laws of Tarna by taking things belonging to others. You have shown yourself to be without honor. Do you have anything you wish to say before you are named honorless? Hey, big deal. Then by the judgment of the Council and the laws of Tarna, you, Harami, are now formally named honorless. So you have acted, so you shall be. The honorless one must leave the hall. Council of Judgment now summons the Princess Shapir. Council of Judgment wishes to thank the Princess Shapir for acting as a witness in the trial of the Honorless One. King Raja orders Rakesh and the Prince of Shapir to meet with him in his chambers immediately. You may enter into the presence of Raja Shah Tarna. Raja Shah Tarna, I stand before you. Rakesh Shah Tarna, you stand before me in honor. This is my friend, the Princess Shapir. You tell the king that you are honored to be in his presence. Princess Shapir, you stand before me in honor. 
The key she brought along this Princess Shapir to help you bring peace. How can a human be of such service to a lion tar? So human, you have imitated Rikish to become a paladin. Why did you follow him here? Don't you think Rikish is enough of a paladin to handle the situation? You answer Raja's question. Very well. So this Princess Shapira has come to bring peace and harmony to Tarna. You grow too old, Rikish, if you must depend upon a human for help. Your age has made you cowardly and taken away your honor. You, def you defend Rikish's bravery and honor. You need a human to speak up for you now, Rikish? I do not need to defend myself to you of all people, Raja. Rikish, you of anyone should be demanding war instead of talking about peace. Rishaka is lost. Your own daughter has been killed by the Leperman. Do you not want revenge? The truth of what happened is yet been not been determined. What I know for certain about Rishaka, I will deal with the matter myself. I do not need all of Tarna to suffer the horrors of war for my daughter. Revenge for the sake of revenge is pointless. Mindless. Revenge is pure stupidity. Rikish, you... Human! Do you have anything important to add to this conversation? You speak of how Rikish helped you and Shapir. You are fortunate, Rikish, to have such a defender of your honor. Human, you may leave our presence now. I wish to speak for the Rikish. Tell Raja farewell. Alright then. Naraksaid Effendi, good day. I am the money changer, Dahab Khalis. Do you wish to exchange some foreign coin for the money of Tarna? You greet the money changer. May you have a good day as well, Effendi. I think Effendi, I think it means like I think it means Prince. Exchange to Royals. Let's see here. I don't remember who sells what or any of that stuff, but we'll go to the merchants. Water skin, zebra skin. What is that for? Bargain. I think you can get better bargaining prices. The better your like intelligence and communication stuff is. It's too low. Still too low. Give me more. Too low. All right, looks like. All right, looks like one ninety six is the is the price. How many can you get? Oh my! <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not crazy here. Uh, I didn't even check my gear. Do I, oh, I only have one? It didn't carry over all of them? Or my lock picking stuff or any of that. Kata and Tarna. Rations. 20. The healing pills carried over. All right. So, uh, you pay for your purchase and put them away in your backpack. The zebra skin. What? I forget what that's for. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll bargain. We'll get one, I guess. 
too low. It is good. I'm not going to read the, you pay for it and put it in your pack every single time. Fruits, mixed fruits. <coughs> mm. I really don't think that's necessary, but 50 centimes. I think that's what they're called. Okay. See, I didn't need it because you didn't hear that. Da -ding. All right. I see that you are in need of a new weapon. Here's the finest daggers. It's made of Damascus steel. It's too sh sharper than the of the tooth. It's small enough to be concealed up your sleeve, ready when your foe least expects it. Uh, without a doubt, the best weapons for sale in all Tarda. You'll be needing a weapon. I'm the man you would see. Come, take a look and buy what you like. Alright, let's see what you got. A fine dagger, a fine spear, and a throwing dagger. Okay. Uh, a tinderbox. Oh. Tinder boxes. That's like the old school lanterns. <coughs> Bargain. We'll offer. We'll offer 160. You got to be kidding! For this genuine, guaranteed, no money back antique, I can't accept less than 200. Pop, it's only a tinder box. Who's a dummy around here, dummy? At any rate, I'll accept 200 columns for the item. Look, I'll make you a deal for this. Okay, it's a deal. What do you mean? It's okay. You want to lose us all our money, dummy? I'm coming, Elizabeth. I'm coming soon. Our only son is trying to give away all the things we worked for. This is it. It's the big one. Oh, Pop. You're always welcome back if you want to buy something. Honey. Uh, yeah. Make an offer. We'll do nicely. Okay. What does this guy have? Olive oil? Uh. I don't remember. Let's offer 79. If I accept your offer, I would lose money. However, because you are such a fine man, I'll make you a deal. You still seek to beggar me? I cannot part with this much less than this. Very well, you have out bargained me, and I shall remain a poor man forever. Pay for it and put it in your pack. I guess I didn't need it. This guy sells fish. I think she sells beads. <coughs> beads, beads, very fine beads. Very good beads. 95 Effendi. 95 Fendi. Okay. Fine. You pay. Oh, well, that's right. I'm not reading it. Mm -hmm. This dude sells, like, ropes. Yeah. Bargain. Support a wife, a son, and two daughters with the sale of this rope. She really could afford to pay this, pay this much for so fine a rope. I'll accept your offer and you shall own a fine rope. A thousand thanks. Pay for it and put it in your pack. Oh, there's the cat. Uh, supposed to show the cat of the pin. Greetings, if any may. I am 
interest you in my carvings of wood? Object of this time is an inappropriate offering. I'm not offering it to him, I'm just trying to show him. You gotta give this note. Thank you for your kindness in bringing me this note from my Aunt Shima. It is so wonderful to have news from home. Sad to be so far from Shapir and those for which I care. Alright. Um, cool. Alright, so what do I... You saw to buy it, the carved leopard? It will give me great pleasure to give you this leopard as a gift, my friend. I hope you accept it as a token of our friendship. You now have the ability to make your magical sword burst into flame during combat. The drummer smiles as you give him ten commons. Oh, because I did nice things. It make paladins. Paladins gain their power from doing nice things. Their abilities. What does this dude have? Good day, master. How may this worthless son of a dog serve you? Perhaps you would like some meat? May I sell you some meat, please? Uh, sure. Oh, goody, goody, goody. If the dog ma good master offers a price, I'll accept it. Most lucky called in the world. Okay. There. Cool. What does this dude have? Amulets, protect yourself from all misfortune. Amulets? Dude, you got a fro. You look around the stain at the various amulets of dubious quality, and you decide to waste your money elsewhere. Good day, Effendi. A robe. The cloth from which the robe is made is worth more than you offer. That offer will pay for the work of the one who made the robe. However, you must still pay for the material. The offer is barely enough to cover the cost, Effendi. However, I do need to make some profit. Okay. Fine. You pay for it, put it in your pack. Alright, save. Let me continue. You see a small bowl full of coins for, for the drummers. Alright, let's check out our stats. Communication, our honor. We got 10 paladin. What if we offer him more money? Didn't do a thing, so we're getting our money back. Restore. You must be the Prince of Shapir. People are talking about. Wow, I've never met a real prince before. Welcome to my apothecary, Prince. Say hello. You say hello to the apothecary. Oh, hey, good to see you, man. You tell about Shapir. You tell about your adventures in Shapir. You know, I have dreams about a desert land like that. They're like so real. It's like, wow. Healing pills, cure pills. Mana pills, dispel, potion. Oof. Hey, money isn't everything, but it does pay the rent. It's not enough cash to pay for the ingredients, let alone this pad. Gee, I hate to see material or mundane, but I do need more money than that. How about just a little bit more to cover my time? Hey, my... Okay, come on, man. He's not gonna bargain. You got a deal. <laughs> wow, I never sold one of those. I'll need to have to look... I'll need to look it up in my book. Hey, check this out in the pharmacopoeia. Hey, wow, man. 
already got most of this stuff. There's the bee's knees and the abyss's eyelashes and a clear amethyst crystal. Out of sight. So like all I need now is some water from the pool of peace, a gift from the heart of the world, and oh yuck, the fruit of a venomous vine. That really shouldn't be too much of a problem for a hero like you, should it? Maybe if you can get the missing ingredients, I'll make you up a po dispel potion. Okay. But you still took the money. Cure pills. No, we don't need any of that stuff because we, uh, we want all that stuff pretty much elsewhere. Let's see here. Dreams. I'm I dream I'm in this like desert place with like golden sand and stuff. I'm dancing with this tree, you know, and it like changes. Suddenly this tree's like a woman. I'm like she's beautiful. It's really magical. You know, let's tell him about see if we can tell him about Julinar. Yep, tell him about Julinar. Tell about how you helped the enchanted tree woman Julinar regain some hope while you were in Shapir. How extraordinary. The girl in my dreams is real? I'm so thrilled to hear it. I will leave for Shapiro on the next caravan there. Alright. Um, plants. Plants are like people. They love to share their hopes, their dreams, their finest feelings with you. Have you hugged a tree today? No, uh, that was the last game. I've already covered that. Boogie with the Boo Bob and Polka with the Palm, Mambo with the Mango, and Fandango with the Fronds. I have these really neat dreams about dancing with a tree. Yes, get some help. All right, so we can sit, so we can save this, and we can sit down and hit, take a hit of acid. I think it's acid. Nothing happens when you try to smoke the the unlit pipe. You like to pipe with your tinderbox. You suddenly feel a little strange and very dizzy. Prosper, have a splendiferous day. Yeah, so he's like a stoner, just so you know. But really, most people are not. Habari Buana, Maharik Said Effendi. Welcome to, to the Welcome Inn, son of a Sultan. I am known as the Welcome Woman. Krisha, the mother of magic, has a room for you here. It is the first door on the right after you go up the stairs. I hope it will serve you well. I must return to work now, but if you would like a meal, just take a seat at one of the tables. <coughs> Hello, hair of sunshine. What can I do for you? <coughs> My name is Jana Jamil, which means beautiful paradise in Arabic. I flirt with her. You will melt my heart with such talk. You of the talented tongue, are you the, as skilled in deeds as in words? Uh, tell about Shapir. Tell about the, tell the one about your adventures in Shapir. You're indeed quite a hero seeker of peace. I can't, it's like, I don't know, it seems really vain to keep telling everybody about that. You greet the look. Maharabi and Fendi, you're most welcome here. He was polite. Uh, order a meal. Oh, bring your meal right out.
Here is your feast, may it please you. Mm, this food looks strange, but smells delicious. You pay the welcome woman for your meal. Be welcome and may you enjoy it. You enjoy your meal. It was very tasty, even if it was a bit strange. Alright, so you look around, you see some funny looking characters. Like this clown here. It's a silly clown from Trial by Fire. You see a young woman wearing a nice, nice clothing. Egyptian clothing. You see a man dressed in an elegant Arabic costume. You see someone who looks like he is from North Africana. From the amount of food on his plate, that must be all over from the programming team. Amazing what some folks will do to get a good meal. <laughs> all over from the programming team. If you have need of magic, I shall be honored to serve you. Krisha. Laws of Tarna. Thou shalt harm none. Thou shalt not use magic upon the streets of Tarna. Thou shalt not take that which is not thine. Thou shalt behave with honor. Potions, pills, but You need it, we got it. See us in the bazaar, the newly used emporium of regular antiques and interesting items. Alright. Let's leave the city for a bit. Okay. So, like, this is the world map. Uh, your your guy it shows like little dots, red dots following your guy. Uh, it really, it only stops. It's kind of like Final Fantasy, the world map. It only stops if you find a place of interest. Or if you hit a ran random fight, a random encounter. Uh, I'll... I'll record some of those random encounters, obviously, but I'm not going to record every one of them, just because uh, you're not going to, I mean, you don't need to see me fight the same guy potentially 30, 40 times, right? Oh, it's dark. Oh. Battle's about to begin, alright. Fighting this one's a little bit, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit crappy. horn you didn't find anything else useful all right so we'll sleep for like an hour okay our health isn't terrible wait what stats will we increase I forgot I didn't look it up freaking ants you're getting tired the rocks here form a small alcove where some very interesting looking plants are growing on the far side you see some animals watching over the plants they look like meerkats with wings they must be mere bats Whipping out your famous explorer's guidebook, you identify the creatures as a mere bat. This vine is covered with ripe, ripe fruit. Uh, I forget. Is that, is that the way?
No, I, I think I did it wrong. There we go. One of them gets one of them gets caught. I think. Like I said, I haven't played this since I was like 12 or 13. I'm 36 now. Yeah, there he goes. He gets caught. So then I have to help him out. I think as you approach, yeah, you notice the small mirror bat watching over you. You pick up the rock, which seems to be glowing opal. You also get the fruit and put them carefully away in your pack. All right, so that that's what that bat gives you for helping him out, because he would have died if you didn't. Those are poisonous vines. All right, it's day two. All right, so let's see what else. I guess I could probably go to sleep soon. Oh, I, I probably can't leave this map yet. I thought I could go explore freely. I guess not. Not yet. Alright, so we'll go back to Tarn. We'll go to sleep because our dude is tired. That map, like, it, like days go by traveling on that map, potentially. Alright, we'll eat, we'll get some sleep, and then, uh, I gotta go to the gym. I'll come back, and I'll play it some more, and then I'll, I'll edit it and upload it for your p viewing pleasure. I'm also gonna be uploading a video from the gym. The rations, I mean, you can eat them in town, too. Your character automatically eats them. But uh, I try to save them for when I'm out and about. In case I can't get the food and stuff, you know? Because you can't starve to death in this game. Huge chest looks like a good place to store those things you really don't need to carry around everywhere. Uh, oh yeah, during the day you can't rest like the whole night. You don't want to be late for your meeting tomorrow. You need you head for your room so that you'll be well rested. Okay. You awaken as the sun begins to rise. You get up just in time for your meeting and quickly head to the Hall of Judgment. Two months ago, the Sumbani requested that we aid them in their war against the Leopardmen. It was the decision of this council to send emissaries to the Leopardmen to determine their grievances. The peace mission was ambushed at night by creatures or beings unknown. Evidence and account of the sole survivor of the ambush indicate the Leopardmen. A warrior of Tarna, Rishaka Dar Krisha, was discovered missing from the bodies of the emissaries. Signs and scent indicate some sort of struggle, and then all trace of Rishaka was lost. Rishaka Dar Krisha is presumed to be dead or else a prisoner of the Leopardmen. It is our duty to seek revenge upon the Leopardmen for those who are lost. Flying targets had no business involving themselves in the deeds of humans. The peace mission should never have occurred. It's the duty of all those in Tarna to care for her people. And the humans are as much the people of Tarna as the Lion Tars. The warriors of Tarna desire revenge and the right to gain honor through battle. There is no honor in war, warrior of Tarna. There is only death. 
My magic indicates that there are signs of demonic activity. If demons are involved, it is they who are the enemy, not the weapon men. Council of Judgment. I re the key Shatarna stand before you. I swear by my honor to prevent the war and to bring peace to all Tarna. The key Shatarna has sworn by his honor to bring peace to Tarna. If he fails, he shall be deemed honorless and shall be banished from Tarna forever. Do you, Princess Shapir, also swear by your honor to bring peace? Uh, no, yeah. Council shall respect the honor of Rikish Shatarna and allow him time to fulfill his oath. King Raja orders Rikish and the Prince of Shapir to meet with him in his chambers immediately. Raja Shatarna, I stand before you. Rikish Shatarna, you stand before me in honor. You tell Raja you stand before him. You stand before me in honor, human. Rikish, are you so besotted by humans that you pledge your honor for them? What in the name of Sekhmet do you think you are doing? I have always pledged my honor to save lives, my lord. You, human, do you understand what it means to pledge honor? Talk about honor. You tell Raja the meaning of honor. When I want a lecture upon honor from you, I will ask a human. You did ask him, Raja, after all. When I want your comments for Kish, I shall ask for you. Kish, you and I have disagreed on many things, but I have always cared for you as my brother. I care greatly for you, Raja, and respect you as well. However, if I feel that Tarna must go to war, it shall go to war. Even if I must strip you of all honor, Kish, Tarna will go to war. I only request that you wait until my friend here and I have done all we can to prevent it. I will wait. Do not take too long. If the Sambani march against the Leopardmen, I intend that Tarna shall aid them. You human, do you have anything further to say? You start to tell Raja about Shapir. Enough of this prattle. Rakish, I cannot understand why you risk your honor and your life for humans. You can stay here in Tarna as my advisor or lead my armies as commander. To risk everything for peace is beyond my understanding. This is an old argument between us, but Raja, mother's son, must we fight in front of our friend? He would leave us now. You say goodbye. I will meet you just outside the gates of Tarna, then we'll go to the Sabani village together. You now leave to meet R Rakish again outside the city gates. It feels very good to be back in my homeland, my friend. This is the savannah, the high grasslands that teem with animals. There are a few animals which will bother a traveler here. The zebras and other herd animals will avoid you. Even the tigers will seek other prey. However, there are things that are not quite animals. They have little fear of humans and may attack. A field guide to Eastern Fricana will help you, so study it well. Uh, I guess that's like the, the guide book that comes with it, that used to come with the game when it first came out. Not the good old games, the edition that I have, although I think it's on the disc, maybe. I will be using my skills as a paladin to avoid danger. As a paladin becomes more in tune with essential rightness of the universe, he gains certain new abilities, such as healing. The more good one does, the more good things one can do. I have been a paladin for a long time now, ever since the demons last invaded this land. We must prevent this war between people and drive any demons back to the world in which they came. You are but a new paladin, but your already your powers grow with each act of kindness. The first thing a paladin learns is how to make his sword glow with the blue fire of honor. This adds to your weapon's damage and allows it to harm things that cannot be harmed with normal weapons. It is getting dark and this looks like a good place to camp for the night. It's always best to have a campfire at night. It drives off many things. If you don't yet own a tinderbox, I would advise you to purchase one. Rakish starts a fire and you share some food he, he brought with him. Then you both lie down to sleep. Good morning, my friend. Let's continue our journey to the Sambani village.
As you have gained an experience and spread goodness, the next skill you gain is the power to heal. This gift of healing can be used upon yourself or others. However, it pulls upon your inner strength and cannot be used if you allow yourself to become weakened. As you grow more in tune with the perceptual rightness of the universe, you'll be able to feel the, righteous, the rightness of all things. You'll be able to sense when danger is near. When you have done much good, you'll be able to protect yourself more fully. Whenever your sword is filled with blue fire, you shall be surrounded by an honor shield. This helps protect you from physical and magical harm. The more honorable acts you do, the greater your abilities. We are nearing the Sabani village, so I will speak more about being a paladin later if you are interested. Habari Muzi Mungoji Missouri Lion Man Rakesh, it is good to see you. It is good to see you, Mungoji. I have here a friend and brave warrior from afar to see the wonders of your village, Habari Buana. You say hello to the elder, Missouri Buana. Behold the village of the Sambani, from the pen where the injured cattle stay, the huts where we sleep, and the pal places where we work and play, enter and become, be welcome. We are most honored, Zimwanji, to enter your village, Kwaheri, Kwaheri Zabla. I'm not going to read all the gibberish stuff. I'm not going to do it. It's just, it's not words. I'm not doing it. You can read it. We both look healthy and happy to be home again. It'd be it'd very good to be home. I'd be happy to show you both the, the way of the Sambani. We are honored. Come then, we will meet with the leader of the Sambani, the Lay Bone. Abari Lebon um, Warrior Missouri Lebon I Uhura Warrior of the Sabani be standing before you with two warriors from far lands. Habari Warriors. It is good to see you again, great leader of the Sabani people. It is good to see you, Warrior Rakesh. You greet the Lebon. You are welcome here. Lebon, I have come here to bring peace to your people and the Leopardmen. I have sworn this by my honor. Bring the Leopardmen chief to his knees before me, and you shall have the peace you pledge. What has caused this great anger for the Leopardmen, Lebon? The Leopardmen have always been our enemies. They be sneaky and not be trusted, for they only travel at night. The worst of all be that they use magic. Leopardman is the enemy. If the Sambani be seeking a lost calf in the jungle at night, then the Leopardman uses magic against him. The Sambani cannot fight magic, so he must retreat. The Leopardman will not meet the Sambani in a fair fight. The Leopardman will always be our enemies, and now they have made us call for war. They stole from us the Spear of Death, and for that they shall die. Then they will no longer be our enemy. There are ways to resolve the conflicts between the Sambani and Leopardmen other than through waging war. I would like to see you, Lebon of the Sambani and the Chief of the Leopardmen, speak your grievances before the Hall of Judgment in Tarna. Perhaps there can be a, yet be a peaceful resolution of conflict. No, Rakesh. The Spear of Death is stolen and we will fight to regain our pride. The worth of the Spear will be paid in blood, not words. I have spoken. Farewell, Lebon of the Sabani. May we meet yet meet again in peace. You all walk back to Uhura's hut to rest and discuss things before the evening. It's good to be back in your own hut again, is it not, Uhura? Good, very good. But Simba, well worth leaving my home for. The Lebon was most gracious to see us, yet I feel as though we were not welcome. I do not understand, for I have always respected him. How do we offend him? I be not knowing, Rakesh. The Sambani have lost much honor with the stealing of the spear of death. Still, for the Labo not to listen to your words of peace be not right. Perhaps he will listen another time. 
you speak about the events which occurred today. It has been a long and most interesting day today. Days be very good days when friends be together again. It's true. Laybone be my mother's brother, and he always always been kind to me. I not know what be troubling him that he not listen. The spear of death be a powerful weapon for the Sambani. Only the best of, Le of Laybones may have the spear. Our Laybon is the best of the Laybones. This village be where I played as a child. It be our home for this time. When the time of the, t little, the little rains come, we move to another village. This way the cattle always have plenty of food to eat. It will not be easy to bring peace unless the Laybone desires it. It's easy to force war upon others, but not to force peace. When we see the villagers look at their faces, if there is war with the leopard men, many of the young warriors will be dead a year from now. If there is war with the demons, they will all be dead. If the Sambani be at war, he so too be I. I be a Sambani warrior. I have pledged my honor to bring peace to your people. You do not return to your village to die in a meaningless war. I swear it. Oh, that's nice. You say goodbye to everyone. You be right here, Oshapir. We be sitting too much. We should go out to the village. The villagers be waiting to see you again, Rakesh. They be killing a young bullock in your honor. The blood be very fresh. The Sabani celebrate your arrival with meat, milk, and dancing. It is late when you finally make it back to your hut. We were treated royally by the Sabani. That was meat from the Lollibon's own herd. I will head back to Tarna at first light. Find out what you can about what is going on. I do not think the Lollibon told us everything he knows. If you can find the Spear of Death, we may be able to convince the Lollibon that war is unnecessary. Good luck. Do whatever you can to win the respect of the Sabani. We will undoubtedly need their cooperation to restore the peace. As I said, I'll go back to Tarna and find out if Krisha has learned anything more about the demons. Learn what you can, learn from the Sabani, and try to keep them from starting this war. Return to Tarna whenever you need to do so. Until I know for certain that demons are again released in the Tarna, I need to stay near my brother. Raja still believes that war is honorable. He will be trying to convince the council to declare war upon the Leopardmen unless I am in Tarna. Raja may succeed in starting this war. The, to the Sambani, the essence of honor is trust. They are very open people and share evenly with all members of the tribe. To the Lion Tars, honor is a matter of pride in obeying the laws of Tarna. To the paladin, honor is doing whatever it takes to bring about the greatest good for everybody. The way of the paladin is very difficult and lonely at times, for you must trust your own heart to know what is right and not the judgment of others. Alright. Good night, my friend. You awaken as the sun begins to rise. Rakesh left the hut at first light. You vaguely remember hearing his farewell. I love Rakesh. Alright. And that's it for now. I'm going to the gym. I'm making a video there. I will see you later.